Joe King Carrasco's live performances have been described as two-hour parties where the dancing never stops. This is quite true. Carrasco and his band, The Crowns, have been uh, giving royal performances from Texas to France. And here with us today is royalty itself, the man who puts the buena in rock and roll. We've got a very special guest named Joe, <laughs> Joe King Carrasco. He's going to sashay over and just chat with us here at MTV for a while. Wish we had stripper music for right. you, Joe. All have right. you have you strip off your cape and strip off your crown and just give us a chat. Tell us what it's like to to be Monarchy. Joe King Carrasco and yes, well, it's a, pretty a, tough. a royal rock and roll person. It's pretty tough. I have four crowns. I'm getting a new one made with. Uh, they have Pac-Man's going around the sides of it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping up with the current Electric crayons. crowns. Electric crowns. Digital crowns. You must get the uh, butter. Butter? No, margarine? No. <laughs> yeah, it happens a lot. I, I was talking in the, in the intro about your live show. That's, that's got to be uh, the thing that I want to start off talking about. Now, I, I haven't actually seen you perform live for a little better than a year. But Damn I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you had a tendency, do you have any stage flight? You had a tendency to run off the stage a real lot into the audience, into, I'm told, bathrooms. Yeah, go out in traffic. And trees, I climbed trees. I went on Fifth Avenue one time, I jumped on a guy's car while he was in the car, and it was a Cadillac, and he got out, you know, was chasing back into the club. It was really wild. The weirdest time though was in Holland. One time I, I ran right on stage, you know, and I tripped. And I just fell into the audience. It was really embarrassing, his first song, but that's about it. <laughs> Hurt my ankles a lot. Well, since you're talking about falling on stage, we also had, we had a couple of stories about you. Yeah. We deliver music news twice an hour. At yeah. Right? Now, we, you can confirm these stories or deny them if you prefer. <laughs> um, one uh, was regarding uh, a performance of yours where you, you sought to wear a, a duck mask. Could you elaborate? Mm -hmm. A what? You know, duck was, mask? Yeah, duck mask. And this was at Disneyland. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, that was a, yeah, I was wearing a duck mask and Mickey Mouse ears and pirate socks from the Pirates of the Caribbean. Basically, now I was seeing Sir Douglas Quintet and I was out dancing by myself and the, the guard came up and went, out, <laughs> you know? And, uh, but, so I just took everything off. They don't like you to wear the, you know, the characters at Disneyland. They don't like you to imitate them too much. But otherwise, I like Disneyland. <laughs> and how can you not like how, how can you not like Walt Disney? Right. I mean, I mean I'm a Walt Disney character right here. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. <laughs> As the chair flies over. All right. Now are you gonna let's have a confirm or deny on uh, uh, a story that I heard about a dare from uh, some ladies from Los Angeles, the Go Go's. Oh, yeah. Dared you to streak on stage. Yeah. Well, let's start out with a flash, with the trench coat flash. Then our lips are sealed, and. Uh, then, uh, then they challenged me to streak at the Palladium in New York, and uh, and if I didn't streak, I would have lost all credibility with the go go So I had to do it. But it was really weird. I did it, and I fell on stage in front of 3,000 people. It was real embarrassing. I cut my knee up, and everything it was terrible. But you I did do it. You were, you were. Uh, Those girls stone will never be the same. Nude. Right. <laughs> I had my cape. <laughs> <laughs> Those girls will never be the same after that. Neither will I. They wanted to see the crown jewels. <laughs> oh, that was it. That's right. That's right. Was, will you show us the real crown jewels? Well, I right? did. Right here. <laughs> you got um, the, the kind of things that you write about, the songs that you write about. Yeah. Diverging from your live performance a little bit, uh, are, are supposed to be based on true experience, heartfelt uh, sorts of things. Yeah. I'm going to pull one song out of a hat. And, and ask you to give us the story behind Monkey Got My Frisbee. Monkey Got My Frisbee? All right, well, the thing about that is down in uh, Lake Catamaco, Mexico, it's in, it's in like southern Mexico by Veracruz, there's uh, an island in, on the, in a Lake Catamaco. There's pyramids on the island. There's monkeys around there. When you throw a Frisbee, the monkeys will come up and take your Frisbees. And you can't get them back. So this is in the literal sense. I thought you were alluding to... Uh, Not to talk about broken hearts. <laughs> No, it's, it's really weird. It is the truth. The monkeys do take frisbees down there. That's why I write all my songs is right around monkeys and parrots. Do you remember the first song you ever wrote? Uh, Wild 14. <laughs> Wild 14? Yeah, and about seventh grade girls. How old were you when you wrote it? 
<laughs> 24. <laughs> no, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You grew up in Austin. Yeah. And uh, right, you're off. You sort of. Sort of. Yeah, I grew up around Austin and all over Texas, and a little bit of California, a little bit of Mexico. So, but a little uh, bit out of space, you know. <laughs> we can see. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, so the, the, the kind of things that you're writing about, the kind of things that that are close to your heart, does that come from? There, there's a certain kind of radio that, that was that happens in Texas. Well, well down in Texas, they have like a, a lot of. Uh, regional radio, like Chicano radio, which Chicano is like, you know, Tex-Mex radio, you hear all Tex-Mex music, accordion music, and a lot of my songs come from that kind of vein. We should, uh, we should talk, I think, about, about Tex-Mex music, and, yeah. and let's not assume that everybody who, who's watching understands what Tex-Mex is. I mean, you're from the area, right. so of course you know. What, you want me to tell you what Tex-Mex rock and roll is? Tex-Mex rock and roll kind of started out with songs like Sam and Shem had Woolly Broly, and then their Question Mark Mysterians had 96 Tears, and they're real party songs. They're like Tex-Mex music's the best party music in the world. If you want an alligator to it, we'll do whatever you do. <laughs> I'm afraid, afraid to ask. We might get you to alligator here right. again. <laughs> so so Tex-Mex is basically, it's the Mexican influence yeah, it, yeah, because it's on the border there, and you hear a lot of Spanish music constantly, so you tend to it sinks into your music real heavily because that's all you hear on the streets, and uh, it's 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 the best music in the world to dance to. We're, what we do is we take a Spanish melody and rock it up like Santa Shaman. Right, and it goes crazy. It goes wild. A certain kind of organ sound. Yeah, real kind of trash organ and everything, and you know it, it sounds real hot. There's a there is. A, Tex-Mex, and there's something that I've taken the calling Lamex. 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 David Lindley was was here. Uh, oh, California. L.A. Max. Yeah, our stuff's like L.A. Max in a way, but is there a difference? Well, the Los Angeles Mexican music is more from Mexico. I mean, it's more like traditional Mexican music. Where Tex-Mex is is more combination of in Texas, the first settlers in Texas were Germans. I'm German. I'm it's Aliman. And, and the Chicanos in Texas sort of adopted that German polka style and put it to their polkas. So it's Tex-Mex music is basically comes from Texas, whereas the California Mex music comes from Mexico. So it's just okay. different. Oh, well, you know, it's a lot of different things there. But we wrote most of our songs in L.A. Uh -huh. We're trying to get across to the Chicana teeny boppers. <laughs> right. That's why we do bilingual music, so that they, they can understand it down in South America and Central America. In Spain. I'm going I'm to talk to you about your attitudes about the South and Central America in a, in a minute. But you mentioned something about uh, about your your descendants, and you, you said you were what German? Yeah. And in Texas, they call Aliman. Aliman. Yeah. So is Carrasco your real last name? No, it's Torch. It's uh, Carrasco was a uh, a real big uh, hero in Texas. He's like Pancho Villa in Mexico. Is to Mexico. Carrasco is a Texas. Same thing. Was he, is he an outlaw? Or? Yeah, he was a real big outlaw. He had the longest prison siege in Texas history. <laughs> Where the Texas Rangers are today. <laughs> so who gave you the name? Where'd you get the name? Uh, I played in a, in a Chicago band where they, we had four Joes in the band, and uh, they said, well, we're going to call you Carrasco, and they started calling me Carrasco from then on. And it's a pretty heavy name. It's a, they're making a movie about him right now, Char Charles Bronson starring in it. Ah. Yeah. He's going to be a household warrior here real soon. So maybe you can get in on the soundtrack. Oh, yeah, I want to. Maybe. Viva Carrasco! Yeah! <laughs> no, no, no. Tejas is, Tejas is nuestra. It means Texas is ours in Spanish. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> Woo! <coughs> That's what they say on Mexico. See, Texas, uh, the white settlers took Texas from Mexico. Right. So a lot of people still think Texas belongs to Mexico. I guess that's a fight down there at this point. It's Hold pretty on. serious. Uh, did you hear, you know, Ozzy Osbourne last week, uh, he, uh, he did some real things to the island. It was really funny. Relieved himself. Yeah. Uh, That's uh, like uh, going up to the, you know, the castle in England and spitting on the queen. I mean, yeah. to me, it's all right with me. You know, I don't know. It's, it, has, it doesn't mean anything for me. <laughs> so, so we're talking about Carrasco, and you were dubbed Carrasco, and it, yeah. And they started calling. Did they start calling you the king as well? Uh, that point? Well, down in Texas, it's really strange. There's the king of mobile home sales. The king of uh, <laughs> rental car sales. I mean, there's you know there's king for you know restaurant kings and uh, apartment kings and 
There was a, like Sir Douglas Quintet, you've heard of them, have sure. you? Sure. And, and then there's uh, Lord August and his Visions of Light. And then there's uh, Count Rock and Sydney, and then uh, Rock and Doopsy. I mean, there's a lot of princes, and you know, King fit Carrasco, so we did that. Right. It, it worked out real good. I get treated like a king everywhere I go. <laughs> you just naturally assume the, right. the garb. Right. And I, you, know, the, you know, and also James Brown wears a cape and crown, and he's the coolest. There's no question you got James Brown influence. Towards yeah. the end of your show, he seemed to... Then, then there's a fighter named Danny Rand Lopez who's really good. Remember him? He's a champion fighter, and he used to wear a headdress. And that looked pretty neat. He's the coolest fighter in the world. Let's see, I, was, I mentioned David Lindley, who took the title of his record, El Rey OX, yeah. from the boxer El Rey Oekis. All right, that's cool. He was a, this was a guy who, uh, according to David, just beat his opponents into the to the mat. I mean, they couldn't walk away. They were done after the match was over. So he took El Rey OX. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, that's 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 all right. <laughs> now we, we were talking. You, you mentioned Central America. You mentioned South America. Yeah. And uh, bef before we came out, we, you were talking about buying land down there. Oh yeah. I've, well, I, I vacate. Well, I'm not playing music. I'm usually down in C Central America or Mexico somewhere. This so I've been hanging out sort of off Honduras now, off an island called Roatan, which has been real nice. And, and that's where I write a lot of my songs. I used to write my songs in Palenque. I'll probably go back there write some more. Palenque, Mexico. It's where the pyramids are. Right. You know, I'm the psychedelicos. <laughs> 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 sure. We won't go into that. <laughs> down in Mexico, looking right. for Don Juan. Or yeah, Don Juan and everything. It's it's real pretty down there. It's a lot of it's it's a good place to get inspiration, right? Mm -hmm. It's the best place. So you're talking about buying land down there and yeah, I have to go dive. I'm going to go swimming underwater a lot. Uh -huh. That's where I write my songs out in the water. What about uh, uh, Carrascoville. Carrasco, oh yeah, we're going to start an island down there called Joe King, Car Joe King Island, right? And we're going to have a big transmitter, I'm going to be number one all year round. And we're going to have, you know, it's going to be like, it's not going to be like Jonestown, it's just going to be King Island, right? And, uh, and it's going to be real cool, you ought to come down, we're selling places right now, you ought to check it out. I want to get on the radio down there. Well, you can be a DJ down there, it's about open. I'm number one though, all year round, you got to remember that. The King. Okay, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> This is for everybody to know. The Joe King Island does exist, and it, uh, people should come down and check it out. It's really pretty. Are you offering by prospectus at this point, or? Uh... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Listen, uh, you could even be minister of uh, TV. <laughs> you know what's really going to uh, change things down in, in South and Central America and around the world is, in, and MTV will be seen all around the world here real soon because on the island I was on, there's no electricity, but they're about to get a, a satellite disc. So when they get the satellite like this, they're going to be able to see everything that goes down. They'll be able to see this show right here, down there. Uh-oh. That's going to be wild. So <laughs> it's, it's, TV is going to go international here real soon. You also have, um, uh, in your music, aside from the Tex-Mex, there's, there's no question that there's uh, third world influence. Yeah. And uh, third world seems to be creeping in, not only in your music, but in music across the board. You know, it seems to have an influence uh, uh, and music across the board now. You feel like that's the future? Yeah, I think uh, what happens is that the United States music is, is good, but I think there's so many influences creeping up in the United States, and the world, it's like a global village thing. Everybody's, the music, the communication is getting so close in now yeah. that it's becoming one music, and that's like I say, the satellite disc is gonna change a lot of music around the world. I, I listen to a lot of Indian uh, music, Indian rock and roll, it's called uh, Indian rock. It's sort of uh, Pakistani rock, and they use a lot of synthesizer. It's real trashy. It's like the B-52s. It's real cool music. Uh, it's, it's funny, you know, I had a conversation with, with a guy who was from, I think it was from Italy, if I remember correctly. And we were yeah. talking about the idea that they, everybody in countries everywhere is trying to do rock and roll. It's where it's at. There's, well, there's no question about that. We're here, aren't we? We're right. Talking, right? <laughs> we're in television. We're making rock and roll into the uh, global village sort of a thing. But uh, there's something about the English language that yeah. it seems to be distinctly suited to rock and roll. I mean, rock and roll, we were talking about Italian. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't quite make it. And I, you're just, for the first time, I've never heard of Indian rock. Oh, yeah, it's what's happening. Indian rock and roll. There's Egyptian rock and roll. And there's Afri a lot of great African rock and roll. Right. You know that. Sure. And, and there's the best rock and roll comes out of Mexico and Central America. I mean, South America's got Brazilian rock. I mean, there's so much good music. Nobody can ever say rock is dead or they're getting bored because they have not traveled if they, don't, if they think that. And 
it's just music everywhere to be heard. And I like, to, you know, that's what I do is I go around hear music, I'll play it. I, it's really, it's great to talk to you because it just comes right out of you. That it I'm does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really does. When we're on the road. We, uh, whenever, when anybody ever falls asleep, we always tie the shoelaces together. Then we yell fire. They all jump up. And the shoelaces are tied together. It's really fun. <laughs> Sit <and> drive. <laughs> You got. Uh, you have a new record. Yeah. Coming out. How soon is it going to be out? About two weeks. Two weeks. It's called Synapse Gap. You know yes. what that is? A brain like, synapse. Yeah, brain synapse. Like disconnected in the nerves. Okay. I mean, you. Uh, it's kind of like go party, go crazy, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, called Mundo Total means the whole world. So we want the whole world to just sort of disconnect and and have fun. Synapse Gap, Mundo Total. Yeah. It's the name of the album. Yeah. And it's sort of like you know it's meant for the whole world to go out and have fun. If I remember my chemistry correctly, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna get into that. Huh? <laughs> uh, there, there are certain uh, hallucinogens that uh, the reason that they they work, as far as scientists can tell, is that it affects the brain synapse. Right. It seems to. Right. Is there? There's no psychedelic influence on Joaquin Carrasco, is there? Uh, well, in certain ways there are. I mean, and down in Mexico, the places where I stay, uh, uh, like in. In, in Palenque, there's the mushrooms there, and, and uh, there's pyramids there, and it, it all sort of walks hand in hand down there. You, you, you have a hard time avoiding it, you know? And uh, I, I don't avoid it very good. <laughs> but it works out real good. And it's there in the music. I, I mean, to me, music uh, it can be a cause of synapse gaps, too, because uh, it makes you disconnect from the rest of the world. It makes you realize what reality is, and that's just to have fun. It, it takes you away from the problems at home. It seems like you disconnect on stage, I'll tell you. Oh, yeah. I mean, the whole thing is have fun and participate and throw yourself out in the audience. And I really get, I, I really think that when you go see a group, you just don't want to see a, somebody sitting there playing music, standing still. I think you want to see a lot of movement. And I think the audience should participate in the music. I'm a real strong believer that everybody should have fun. That's why I go out in my long cord and, and at 60 feet, and people help me with it. And it's real, it's a blast. You got 60 feet of guitar cord. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I jump over speakers, I, you know, I do high dives and everything, it's great. I'm surprised that, you know, maybe you could be the evil Knievel of rock, rock and roll. Or the Mia Earhart of rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> I don't That's know. Great. Evil Knievel, yeah. I, I don't hit reporters though, not yet. No, 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 no. I don't, I'm, I'm glad to see that you're not all scarred up and beat. He's kind of, he's no. broken every bone in his body. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> I'm really easy. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you, you work with video a little bit. Yeah. You have, what, uh, a two video? Yeah. Uh, We're going to video the whole album. Our record company is going to let us video the whole next album. Oh. <laughs> I'm just did, kidding. Do they know that yet? <laughs> no, they don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but I do write my songs. I write my songs around video. Uh -huh. it's, I, I write each song in terms that it should be video, because that's where it's at. I mean, that's, that's where all music's going to. I think that video is where it's the future of rock and roll is. It's the only way you can translate really what the full idea of what a song's about is the video. So the things, the, um, the, the videos that you have done are not live performance, right? They are concept videos. Sort of. Yeah, but still I'm doing what I usually do in a live performance, jumping around and going crazy. And what we, like on the Bad Rep video, uh, we went to uh, NECA and we went to the Capitol and I was on a flying carpet and I was out in the desert. We went to all these places. It's like a Raiders of the Lost Ark video. <laughs> I got to go around the world on the globe. That's what it should be like. It's a lot of fun. Uh -huh. We're going to have to, when, when this interview is, is finally played back, we're going to put some of that in there. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and there, there was an older video that you mentioned. Uh, I, hadn't, I haven't seen it. Buena. Yeah. Yeah, well, that was, that was shot for Stiff Records in, in uh, England, and we shot that in front of Buckingham Palace, and that's why I got arrested for uh, insulting the... They said I insulted the Queen and Royal Guardsmen and everything. It was really crazy scene. Was this by your mere presence there? I had my and crown, and, you know, I had this, I had, in fact, I had the same cape on right here, and it was really wild. Go this, this, this very cape? This very cape was on me, and uh, the, the Royal Guardsman chased me down through the park, and he picked me up by the cape and had me hanging from a horse. He was riding off with me, and I, I weaseled out of it, and he was left holding my shirt. And then he started coming after me on his horse, that's when I turned myself in. And I get, they let me off when they heard my accent. And they realized I wasn't English. And, uh, <laughs> it wasn't of this earth. Right, and, and they let me go, so it was, it was okay. But it was scary. I thought they were going to deport me or something. But. 
I mentioned already a couple of stories that we have reported here at MTV, the Go-Go story and the Walt Disney yeah. Donald Duck story. Now also... A new one, huh? <laughs> uh, we had actually a, a kind of a bad story that I hope you're going to put a happy ending on for us. We heard that Chris oh, yeah. Cummings, your keyboardist, was, was in an accident. Do you want to... Oh, yeah. Well, uh, we did the Go-Go's tour, and uh, the very last day of the Go-Go's tour, where we got off, the first day off, she and our manager went on a sunny drive out in the country, and uh, somebody ran a stop... They didn't run a stop sign. Somebody else ran a stop sign, and uh, she had a wreck. <laughs> well, they had a wreck, and uh, she had a, a little... Uh, tumor on her, not a tumor, some blood clot on her brain, but she's okay now. She's, she was in, she went out there to the ozone for a bit, but she's back. She played with us this week and everything. She's a skinhead now, you know. <laughs> they shaved all her hair off. But she's okay? Yeah. Good. Oh yeah, she's dancing and everything. That's good. It's, it's nice to have her back. There's, uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned at the top, there's something about a Carrasco live performance. Yeah. There's something real distinct about it. In fact, there, there was an article recently, and I don't remember the magazine, but there was an article recently that uh, quoted Bruce Springsteen as uh, they, they were talking to him about what, what he likes, uh, some of the music that he listens to and likes, and, and one of the people in terms of performance that he mentioned was you. Uh -huh. Are you aware of that? I heard about that, yeah. I've never seen him. I like to sing. Uh -huh. I'm always playing. They always keep me busy, and I never get a chance to see him. I hear he's good. <laughs> they say he's great! <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's, he's the to, boss and you're the king. He's, he's everybody, the, I talk to, everybody I've talked to always says he's the best show that's in, ever in rock and roll, so I'd really like to get a chance to see him. Well, this, I keep, through this whole interview, there's all these things that, have, that keep on popping into my mind. It's Snaps gap. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I should have put that in your coat. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> the, the way it seems you go bananas on stage and really yeah. seem to, there seems to be a synapse gap on stage for you, and, and Peter Townsend has talked a lot about how he, he just, he goes somewhere else when he's on stage, he's in another world. And now we're talking about Springsteen, he's certainly an incredible live performer, and, uh, and you as well. Now, I start thinking about the bills and the payments and the... <laughs> well, here, here's, here's something for you to, to, to think about. There's, there's no question about it that, that each year, uh, I guess it was, what, as far as I'm concerned, in the Northeast, living in the Northeast, maybe th three years ago that I got the first single from Joe King Carrasco. That no. was Party Weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Right, with Houston L. Mover on the B-side. Now, right? Yeah. Okay, so if things are, are going along as you would hope and as we would hope, then you're going to be playing to bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger audiences, yeah. much the same way that Bruce Springsteen did. And you have a certain attitude about audiences, a similar attitude to right. Bruce. Now, how are you going to, let's say that you're playing Madison Square Garden or, or some giant hall in Los Angeles, or, in, or or the summit in Houston, or yeah. How are you gonna? Uh, oh, it's, I, I, the bigger the stage, the better I do because it gives me more, more room to run around and dive off speakers. It's like a playground, right? You know, on a little bitty club stage, it's like uh, being locked in a sandbox. But when you're on a big stage, it's like a big playground, and man, you can have a lot of fun on it, and everybody can get into it. I know it's really it's like watching the flea circus, right? And. Uh, <laughs> And you can make it fun. You can walk out in the audience, still go out in the audiences. I, I, I really dig doing that. It's, it's really now fun. 500 feet of guitar cord. Yeah, I think I'm a staff guitar cord. I mean, wirelesses are, they get taken away from you a bit. I was just, I was going to ask you about that. Why? It seems obvious that you should be using a wireless mic and a wireless guitar. I, Why? Well, see, I throw myself in a lot of audiences. I fall back and they'll catch you, but they also grab around for everything they can grab onto, right? And uh, if a wireless is there, they might grab onto that. And we're talking about like a thousand dollar transmitter which is if you lose one a night it gets to be kind of costly i'm trying to work that one in i want to do is i want to assert a wireless in my body right that's what's going to happen and you know what's going to be the future is they're going to instead of walking they're going to put little capsules inside your head and that's why you're going to hear music you're not going to hear a stereo you're just going to hear it all the way around <laughs> scares hell out of me <laughs> boy that's gonna be great it's the ultimate synapse gap definitely <laughs> it's a blast <laughs> Joe, I want to thank you for uh, oh, yeah. for doing this. This has been an exciting experience. Oh, it's been fun. You've got to keep dancing. <laughs> I'm glad to dance. I want you to cover that. I want Chris Montez, yeah, that's it. My car, I threw a rod in my car as I was driving to L.A. one time hearing that song. Right when that song came out, my car threw a rod. I just, too much for my car. And that's some sort of omen. Yeah, my car did a synapse gap. <laughs> it's a new dance. It's like, ah! <laughs> Go on. Let's see if we can we can get you to do some testimonials in foreign languages. Okay. We're gonna roll these things up on the prompter here. We'll do the English ones first. We'll stop the tape for a second. Thanks. That was great. That was, that was great. Great. <laughs> great. <laughs>
Huh? Are you gonna do? Uh, yeah. Was I supposed to look at you? Or look at the camera. No, Whatever you're comfortable with. Oh, oh yeah. Whole, yeah. The whole camera. Because I, I wasn't sure, I couldn't see that red light, you know, I was just like this, you know. That's okay, that's fine, it'll look great. He's going to wear the cape, do you want me to put his mic anywhere else that he might not uh, get it or something? Without leaning, my posture's so bad. Yeah, I told him, I told him. Alright. <laughs> Okay, what are we doing here? Okay, you're just going to read these for us, if you would. Okay? All right. Hey, you bought those! <laughs> are we ready? Okay, yeah. but these are tapes. Are you guys ready to go? Yeah. Okay, we're going to do some testimony. Very quiet. Hey, you bought those! All right, ready? Yeah. Okay. We'll do, the, we'll do the English ones first, and then we'll yeah. do the Spanish ones. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll just give you a little countdown so that we all know that you're going to be starting. Okay. okay. We'll start from threes. Okay? You ready, Joe? Yeah. Here we go. Very quiet, please. In three. Two. Hey y'all, you Vatos, I'm Joe King Carrasco and you're watching MTV Music Television. You'll never look at music the same way again. Ay, 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 ow! <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the best one yet. <laughs> that's great. They're the they're the there. The that's the best one we've had. ever had. Right. <laughs> it's all right. Okay, I think we got some bilingual testimonials. Oh coming. God, wait, wait, wait. these are going to take practice. Do you want to do, do that one again? <laughs> Let's do it again. Let's do one more. He wants, he wants to do it again. Sure. Okay, here we go. Very quiet, please. Doing it again. In three, two. Hey, all you vatos out there, I'm Joe King Carrasco, and you're watching MTV, music television. You'll never look at music out the same way again. Ay, 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 ow! <laughs> 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 All right, let's see the next one. Okay. Uh, I hope you got something out of that. Oh, we certainly uh, did. <laughs> We're going to go. So. Is that too crazy for this or not? No, oh, that's no. fabulous. That is great. That is great. Oh, yeah, that's my wallet. <laughs> oh, thanks. God, I can't believe I did that. I have my wallet get out there. Weird. Oh. <laughs> Brian yeah, <laughs> lifted it during the interview. You're pretty good there, buddy. Uh, see that? Okay, I've got to rehearse this yeah, next. we got a few more. we got a few more. A few more. <sighs> there we go, Joe. Let me know when you guys are set. Are oh, you going to do another one? Yeah, we got yeah. this is a different one. Did you take a look at it? Oh, okay. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you go, something go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm Joe King set. Cross. Just stay tuned for more video music on MTV, music, television, and stereo. Yeah. All right. Okay, here we go. Very quiet, please. In three, two. Hey, all you bought those. I'm Joe King Carrasco. Stay tuned for more video music on MTV, music, television, in stereo. Ay, ay, ay! Ow! <laughs> so mellow. <laughs> no, no, see why I go through all the crowns? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just glue it back together. Got to tell them, John, could you roll John, it? John, roll it up. Roll it up more. We're going to do the bilingual one. John, John. The Is that too quick? No, I'm so used to doing them on radio. You know, hey, no, 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 no. There we go. Okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hola, yo soy Joe King Carrasco y ustedes me están viendo por TV MTV. Música televisión nunca me harán la música de la misma manera otra vez. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Ow. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Here we go. We're set. En tres, dos. Hola, yo soy Joe King Carrasco y ustedes me están viendo por MTV. Música televisión, nunca marran la música de la misma manera otra vez. Ay, ay, ay! Ow! <laughs> I don't know what I was saying on a lot of that, but I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's <laughs> funny. I, don't, I did real bad on that one, but that's all right. You know, what the hell? You're going to get letters. They're going to, who is this guy? Okay, here we go. Last one. Here we go. Very Wait, quiet, can, 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 can Dan say it? Can, can, can Dan I'm glad you guys are having you Spanish people. Right? Musica televisión para más musica televisada en estéreo. Hola, Pachuco. Yo soy. Mi nombre es Joe King Carrasco. Okay, we're ready. Watch this light. Okay. Try not to move too far this way. Okay. You lose your light. Oh, I'm Stay sorry. There, okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Very quiet, please. In three, two. 
Hola Puchucos, mi nombre es Joaquín Carrasco, quédense con MTV, música televisión, para más música televisada, en estéreo. ¡Ay! 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 ¡Au! Okay, sound man, that's a good one. Thank you very much. That was great. That was great. How did you guys do with cutaways? Got enough?